You are welcome to Average Time. This is God's divine arrangement to turn your life around for good. We encourage you to listen attentively as God's servant, Joseph Okwala, brings to you the message of life from God's throne of grace. We give glory to your name. Peace be unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are welcome to Harvest Time. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We say, be thy exalted, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, send your word. Transform our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Yeah. I want to talk on who is Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ. And um, Matthew 16, verse 13 to 20, is the test for this topic. Who is Jesus Christ? When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And he said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye? that I am. Who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajuna, for flesh and blood are not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. I pray that the Father who is in heaven will reveal to you the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. And I say unto thee. That thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth. Shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth. Shall be loosed in heaven. Who is Jesus Christ? I want to let you know. That Christ is both God and man. Don't forget, this message is targeting you to know Jesus Christ so that you can believe for you to be saved. Christ, I say, is both God and man. But I want to speak today on the humanity of Jesus Christ. The humanity of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a man. He was born by a woman. Virgin Mary gave birth to him. He grew as human being. He grew in wisdom. He grew in stature. Just as other human beings do. In Luke chapter 2, we are told in verses 40, 46, and 50. Luke chapter 2, verses 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus grew. He grew. He grew in wisdom. He grew in stature just as ordinary human beings do. He has the appearance of a man even after his resurrection and ascension. Jesus Christ has the appearance of man. They knew him to be human being. If he wasn't a human being, nobody would be able to arrest him, let alone they would crucify him. 
He was crucified. He was buried. And he rose. When he rose, he wasn't a ghost. After his resurrection, he is still a man. His disciple touched him. He told them, he said, I'm not a ghost. Look at me. Look at my hand. He showed them the palms. The, 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 the his palm and showed them the mark of the nail. He said, hold me. He said, ghost doesn't have body. Ghost doesn't have bones. They touched him. They hurt with him. Even up to today, in heaven, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of heaven, at the right hand of God. He seems to me that he still have, he still have to retain the form of a man. Because he's sitting at the right hand of God and having this woman body. Because the body, that humanly body, he ascended with it to heaven. And the scriptures say, he's sitting now at the right hand of God. Jesus Christ is a man because he has human physical nature. He has a body. He has soul. He has spirit. His body was beaten, his body, all of those things was, all of those, all of those crucifixion, his body went through it. He poured his soul and he concluded to say, Father, unto you I commit my spirit. Jesus Christ was subject to the sinless infirmities of human nature. When we talk about sinless infirmities, we are talking about things that happen to human beings that is not sin. It is not a sin for a man to be hungry. Jesus was also hungry. It is not a sin for a man to be thirsty because that is human infirmity. That is a weakness of human being. So he was thirsty. It is not a sin for a woman being to have trek and is tired to rest. Yes, that is the sin. That is what we mean by he was subject to the sinless infirmity. So it is not a sin for a man to sleep. So Jesus too slept. It is not a sin for a human being to cry. Himself cry. He wept. He, he wept. So Jesus Christ had Human names, human names are given to him by himself and others. He called himself the son of man. In Luke 19, 10, he said, the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. And in Matthew 1, 21, they gave him the name. The name Jesus is a human name. Name Jesus. Jesus means Joshua. It's the same thing. Jesus, Yeshua. Joshua. What the implication, the meaning is that he is a savior. Salvation. So human, name, human names were given to him. He bears human name. So he's called Jesus. And he's saved his people from their sin. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, the scripture made it clear to us that. Jesus Christ is a man, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. The man, Christ Jesus, and his human suffering and death shows to us that Jesus Christ is a human being. In Matthew 26, verses 26 to 35, that was where he was, how he was arrested in the garden of Gestiman, and they arrested him. They went to judge him, and they finally crucify him. So, before I close on the humanity of Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ is different from you and I. He is the perfect man, the holy man who lived on this planet Earth that is perfect, is Christ Jesus. He has all perfection. He has all perfection. He was never frightened or elated by success. He was never baffled by Satan. He is the man above all men. We, natural human beings, it is normal for us to be afraid. It is normal for us to be baffled by the terror of darkness. 
we are it is normal for us to be elated by success unless we put ourselves in check. But Jesus does not need to checkmate himself because he is the perfect man. And he is without sin. He is without sin. He didn't come through human intercourse. We inherited sin. In Luke 1, 35, look at the scripture. It says, and the angel said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the all of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing, Christ is holy thing, which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 21. Let's listen to what the scriptures has to say. For he had made him to be seen for us. That is, Jesus Christ became seen for us on the cross. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He is for all time. Jesus Christ is the perfect man because he is for all times. His teachings are not out of date. His words can never be outdated. In Mark chapter 13, verse 31, Jesus Christ said that Heaven and earth may pass away, and they will pass away. Say, none of my word shall pass away. Jesus Christ is the perfect human being. He is a perfect man because he transcends all limitations of all nationalities. He transcends all limitations of all nationalities, though a Jew by birth, yet he belongs to all kindreds. He belongs to all tribes. A Yoruba man will be seeing Jesus as a Yoruba. He will relate with Jesus as a Yoruba man. An Hebrew man will be relating with Jesus, although he's a Hebrew an Igbo man. A Nigerian will be relating with Jesus as a Nigerian. The, an, an European will be relating with Jesus as an European. So he is the man of all nationalities. His name walks everywhere. His life walks everywhere. Anywhere you go in the world, anywhere you belong, whatever be your tribe, Jesus is near you. In fact, he is the nearest kinsman. My beloved brothers and sisters, my fellow hearers, what I have come to present to you today is who is Jesus? And I've established with you that Jesus Christ is man. He is the man, the perfect man who came to save you. Will you bow your heart? And say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. You need him in your life. You need him in your life. Because he is the only one who understands what you are going through. He is the only one who understands your pains. And the one who can help you in all situation. Just tell him, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord, I thank you for your word and I ask that your power will come into this life and you will make yourself real in each of their heart. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We believe you have been blessed by the word of God you just heard. For further help or counsel, call these numbers 0806-615-6208 or 0703-284-4129. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Strago Media for more spiritual messages. Or visit our website at www.stragomedia.com to download those messages for free. 
Thank you for staying to the end of this program. Join us again, same station, same time in next week. God bless you. Amen. 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 All the power.